Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're out the range to do some shooting with the new Glock 43X. This handgun is much like the Glock 19X. It snuck up on me. When I was reading about it online, pretty much all the blogs made fun of it, tore it apart, and I was undecided, but I kind of sort of sided with what's the purpose of it. It seemed like another Me Too gun in that uh, it was just, you know, Glock trying to compete with the P365 SIG. And so I, I didn't know what to think of it. That was right up until I went to a competitor of ours. It's about two towns over. It's in Gary, Indiana. It's called West Forth Guns. Jason and I are in there looking for some used guns, as we typically do. And uh, they had just gotten their shipment of 43Xs and 48Xs in. They hadn't even checked them in yet. But they let me handle one, and the minute I picked this handgun up, I knew it was vastly different than my Glock 43, which I had tried to carry, but really it never caught on, which I'll explain why later in the video. This handgun changed everything, and this handgun I've come to like quite a bit. So what we're going to do is take a closer look at this handgun. We're going to compare it to some of its competitors that are on the marketplace, not all of them, but some of them, and just take a look at about how big this gun is and what does it really offer those of you out there. Uh, that might be looking for a gun that's somewhere in between deep concealment and primary carry. So we're going to take a closer look and share our thoughts. Now, one of the reasons I originally stopped carrying my Glock 19, there are a couple reasons. First of all, I was carrying appendix, and I didn't want to carry a striker-fired pistol appendix, but that's the way I'm carrying this one now. I am carrying the handgun. But another reason was here in the great north, it gets cold, and today is another one of those days where it's about six degrees outside. And with gloves on, when you go to stick that gloved finger in there, I'm pushing that trigger back, the safety is off, and I've slightly started to depress that trigger, and that made me a little bit uncomfortable. The Glock's trigger guard is just a little bit too small for my tastes. So when I put my finger in there, I'm doing it very carefully because this, this wool wants to kind of roll around, and it'd be very easily for me to have an ND. So, Anyway, let's do some shooting with the Glock 43X. Then let's head into the studio where it's a little bit warmer and take a look at it and compare it to some of its competitive products that are out there on the market. Try not to shoot this thing accidentally. Such a sweet shooting pistol. And those TFX Pro sights, love them. All right, let's head into the studio and take a look at some of the competitive products and how they measure up to the new 43X. Very good, little man. Go ahead and drop your magazine out. Is it clear? Look on the other side. Good job. So this is the part of the video where we dig in and get kind of meaty. So guys, if you're looking for a bunch of pretty guns going bang, you might want to click off now. For those of you that want to know how the Glock 43X stacks up to the competition or some of the competitive products on the market, of course, not all of them, just some of the ones that uh, I consider uh, handguns that I might personally want to carry with perhaps the exception of one. Um, yeah, so we're kind of limited in scope here. These are guns that I think make good sense to compare to the G43X. So you're going to, I know in the comments down below, you guys are going to say, what about this? And what about that? And what about this? And what about that? I could make a video that was two hours long comparing the 43X to every single possible handgun on the market that's roughly the same size. Not going to do it. So let's start off talking about some of the features of the 43X. So the 43X, now all these weapons that are on the table have the slides locked to the rear on an empty magazine, so I'm not going to do a, a, a safety check, but we've double and triple checked them. So don't worry about me muzzling myself or the cameraman. <clears throat> so anyway, we have some pretty interesting features of the Glock 43X. Now we jumped on the Glock website to try to figure out what in the world this silver finish was, and that's exactly how Glock described the finish, the silver finish. Nowhere on their website do they tell you exactly what this finish is. So we did some Google fooling. And our Google flu turned up Concealed Carry Nation and T-Tag, Truth About Guns, and they're reporting this finish as the NPVD finish. And perhaps that's why Glock doesn't want to tell you what the silver finish truly is, because if this is a PVD finish, it sucks. Now, the N in front of the PVD, which perhaps stands for nitride, maybe increases the durability of the PVD finish, which we already know sucks because we've seen it flake off handguns like the SIG Legion and other guns. So I don't like PVD finishes. 
in PVD finishes? I guess only time will tell and lots of going in and out of the holster and shooting will tell us if this is going to be more durable than just a standard PVD finish. Up front, we have some slide serrations. And of course, you have our standard slide serrations in the rear. They're aggressive slide serrations. They work good. You would think that this might be a super slick finish. It really doesn't feel any more, um, it's, it doesn't have any more lubricity to it than a standard Glock finish. So you do have a good, you know, good tight grip on the slide with those serrations. If you're a press checker and you like doing that, which I don't, I don't like to have my hand that close to the muzzle on a loaded firearm. But if you do, I'm not going to, you know, be one of those guys on the internet saying, you do everything wrong, no such thing as a press check and all the other stuff that you hear going around the internet. Do what you want, how you want, just don't shoot yourself in the hand. Uh, but so you have those slide serrations up there for that uh, good old fashioned press check. I've even seen some of the guys in competition running their guns like that completely and not even using the rear slide serrations. I'm an old fart, I like the ones in the rear. And don't make fun of me for saying that. Um, yeah, so now we have the you know, we have a, a decent overhang back here, which is nothing new. So you're not going to get a whole lot of slide bite. You, you, those of you guys with real meaty hands may get some skin coming up around the edges, but me and a good, nice tight grip, that's about as far up as it comes. And that's nowhere near the slide. So I've never had a problem with the Glock 43s giving me slide bite. We have, uh, let's see. Yeah, I don't have another one of the, the Glock 40. Uh, the Glock 45 or any of the Gen 5 guns up here, but it has that muted fine stippling, which I actually kind of like. It's not sandpaper against bare skin. I have been carrying this handgun. It feels really good, and it's not, you know, overly aggressive, and it's not underly aggressive. It seems to find that perfect middle ground of giving you a good grip on the handgun without, again, having 60 grit sandpaper against your skin. We obviously have a longer grip here, and let's go ahead and take a look at it next to the Glock 19. I think you're going to find something similar here, the standard larger size Glocks. The grip contour is very similar, right? And that's something that was lacking from the original Glock 43. With its little truncated grip, it just felt off. I never could shoot the gun very well. And this Glock 43X has just a miniature standard Glock grip on it. It's just, you know, smaller. So that's really nice. And when I grab the gun, you'll notice that even with the magazine out of it, I'm getting all my fingers comfortably onto the pistol grip, which for me um, does make the gun more shootable. It's easier to manage recoil, and it's, it's definitely easier for me to get a good sight picture uh, for subsequent follow-up shots and just makes for better ergonomics. Now, I like the ergonomics of this handgun better than I do the Glock 19 or the Glock 17 for one major reason. It's much thinner. If you shoot Glocks, you get used to them, and I have, or did, before I switched over to CZ and other guns that I've carried. When I hadn't shot a Glock 19 for almost a year and I went back to shoot it, it felt like I was holding a two by four. But once you shoot it for a long time, you get kind of, I don't know what they call it, Stockholm syndrome. You just kind of get used to loving your captors. Uh, this thing, well, not this one, but the Glock 19 or not the Glock 17 or any of its derivatives, uh, derivatives thereof, you get comfortable and you, you can shoot it. You can shoot it well. But it's not a comfortable handgun. And those of you that insist that it is, you have Stockholm Syndrome, okay? Go shoot a comfortable gun like a CZ-75, then come back and tell me how comfortable your 17 or 19 is. It's not. You just get used to it, and you can get used to anything, including drinking diet drinks, which are absolutely disgusting. So this little guy has a really good grip on it. It's narrow. It fits my grip extremely well, and I just like it. Again, much like the Glock 19, which was that kind of snuck up on me, I made fun of it, didn't think it served any practical purpose. I get my hands on it, I shoot it. I like it better than both the 17 or the standard 19. The 19X is really one of my favorite Glock handguns, that in the Glock 45, which I also made fun of, so I guess there's three of them. So that, I think, pretty much covers all the other, you know, Features of the gun, you have a nice large magazine release here, which is not new. The original Glock 43 had the same large magazine release. You know, we have the same trigger that's on all Glocks. I mean, really, this is just a Glock uh, with a slightly different, you know, shape and size. Still a 19-ish, um, just single stack. I don't know how else to describe it. Glock for 30 years hasn't really done much of anything innovative. They just changed the size, shape, and caliber of the existing design and just keep repurposing it and not really truly changing it much at all. Some people will applaud that. Me, 
I still think they're a one-trick pony. It just so happens I like a lot of their ponies, and this is one of the ponies that I do like. All right, so how's this thing stack up to the original? Now, I did everything I could to give the original Glock 43 a chance. I'm going to go ahead and drop the magazine out. You can see the weapon's clear. I did everything I could to give this gun a chance. I have my Talon rubberized grips on it. That, If you see that on a gun, that means I'm probably carrying it. I tried to carry this gun. I put some Trijicon sights on this. I did everything I could to make this gun more shootable for me, and I still couldn't shoot this gun to my satisfaction. Yes, I could hit a man-sized target at seven yards. The point is, is with a Glock, I should be able to put them through the same hole. With this thing, I was, you know, it just didn't shoot the way I expected it to. And no matter how much practice, I never got used to the gun. So I wound up putting it in the safe and forgetting I owned it until the Glock 43X came out. Now you have... This magazine, which I wound up using the most with this gun in an effort to get that larger grip, but I still kind of, only, kind of half gets my pinky on there. But I, I hate floor plates that do this. If you're gonna make a floor plate stick out past the grip, put an extra round in the magazine. This is just a complete waste of space. So, but I did it anyway, just trying to get a good grip on the gun, but the grip still makes the gun feel more, like it's dipping down more forward because of the hump that's right here that isn't on the standard Glock style pistol grip frame. And the G43X goes back to the more traditional contour, which I like. So this exaggerated hump pushes the gun down in my grip and it just, it's not comfortable for me. So I wound up hating the gun and that, and it only holds six rounds in the magazine. So what's interesting is I've read some blog articles of people doing what a lot of people like to do, and that's, you know, to rip on new products from Glock. And look, I've done it too. I've made fun of some of the products, but I admit at, at least three times now I've been wrong. And the G43X is a gun that I was wrong about in, in my initial assessment reading the, um, you know, the early reports about the handgun. But people are saying, oh, I'm not going to go to the 43X. I'm just going to stick with the 43 because you know, it's tried and true and it works. Well, if this works for you, the Glock 43X is going to work as well. It's the same darn gun. You just get a 10 round magazine versus a six round magazine. And people are going to say, or have been saying, well, I'm just going to stick with my Glock 43X. Well, if you're going to stick around, stick with the six shooter, you might as well go back in time and put one of these in your pocket because I mean, seriously, guys, if you can get it done with five rounds, who the heck needs 10 rounds? Well, I tell you who needs 10 rounds, 11. If you top the thing off of one in the chamber, I do. This makes me feel much more comfortable about carrying this as a primary carry handgun without carrying a pocket full of spare magazines. Six rounds, when we were out filming this thing, I fired the six rounds and Jason was like, uh, are, what, are you done? Did you fire a full magazine? Because we're just not used to automatics having six rounds in a magazine. It goes by very, very quick and it's gonna go by really quick in a gunfight. So um, yeah. That and now let's talk about the magazine differences. If you're hoping that your the new 10 round magazines are going to fit, fit in the Glock 43, they're not. Okay, and there's a reason for that. It's because this magazine is slightly thicker. This magazine is not backwards compatible. Obviously, you can stick this one in there, but it's just going to wobble around and fall out. It's not going to lock in. So let's take a look at the dimensional changes. This is the the 43X magazine. We have to measure it at the midsection here. And it measures at 0 0.792, 0 0.792. We take the 43, it measures at 0 0.675, okay? So you can see that they are noticeably different. Just a fraction of an inch, but that's all it takes. Now you can see the difference side by side there that the Glock 43X magazine is definitely thicker. Orange follower versus black. Now let's talk about one other thing I've seen some of the guys on the internet talking about, but I don't know what to make of it. So I've seen reports that the Glock 43X has a flared and beveled magazine well. And Jason and I have been looking and looking and looking and comparing it to the G43 and yeah, it's different, but I can't say it's really beveled with the exception of this flare here in the front that the Glock 43 doesn't have. Now, I've tried to take some pictures with my cell phone. I'll roll those in. 
but do you, is there really a, a massive difference in how these grips are designed to facilitate faster reloads? I don't know, but I will say that reloading the 43X is a very natural thing to do. And, you know, if you're used to reloading your, your Glock, it, it's just, it comes natural. So whether it's flared or not, I don't know. It's just fast and easy to do reloads with. So we won't get into that too much. Now, the other question that's popped up I've seen is, will the standard Glock 43 holster, which I have one here, this one's made by Contact Concealment. I use their holsters quite a bit. Will it fit a Glock 43X? There's the 43X in my Glock 43. Now, before you guys go, but the internet says, well, in this case, the internet was correct. When I went to put my Glock 43X into my Glock 43 Kydex holster, it didn't fit right. I'd really have to push it. And that was loosening the tensioning screws. So what I did was lo loosen the tensioning screws, push the gun into the holster, and then I took my wife's hair dryer. Sorry, honey, if you're watching this. And I heated this thing up and got it nice and gooey and then just kind of pushed it around the gun and let it cool. And now it works just fine, believe it or not, with both guns. So there is a, a little bit of a difference in the dimensions of the slides of these two guns. So let's do a quick measurement here. On the Glock 43, we have a slide thickness of 0.862, 0.862. On the 43X, 0.859. <laughs> so what do you think about them cookies? 43.861 this time. These aren't exactly precision instruments. And 0.862. So why is this slightly bigger? Well, we took a look at everything and it's, it's, I'm not sure where that thickness is coming from and why the 43X was difficult to get into the holster. The grip frames are different, okay? You can see there's a slight bulge right here. It seems to be a bit thinner up here, but even on the Glock 43, there's still a slight bulge here where the grip's a little bit thicker, but none of the grip frames really come out past the slide on either one of the guns. So where that extra thickness is coming from, and, and, it's, and it's minute, I'm not sure, but they are not 100% compatible with the existing holsters is my point. And if you have a Kydex holster, a little bit of time with the hair dryer will solve your problems. Okay, with a leather holster, just get it wet, push the new gun in and uh, let it dry. Now, what I typically do is I put a thin layer, like my, get into my wife's supply of cooking supplies and put some of that little, you know, the paper thin plastic, they love to stick on stuff they put in the refrigerator, cellophane or whatever the heck they call it. Uh, I'll put that on a gun, get the leather wet, push it in, let it dry overnight, pull the gun out and the holster should fit without much tension then um, with, the, with the gun that you've just fit to the holster. And I know I'm gonna get criticized by leather makers out there for saying that. So, all right, I think we've done pretty much all the talking we can about the differences between the original Glock 43 and the 43X. Now let's talk about how this thing stacks up to some of the competitive products. This had to have been the biggest disappointment of last year ever. This handgun is one that I madly fell in love with. I could not believe how great it was. Uh, the, a year ago at the NRA show, I was actually carrying one of these guns and then that gun failed at right around the 800 round mark. Uh, I picked up a second one, that one failed right around the 400 round mark, and this is the third one, which we've put exactly 30 rounds through in the filming of this video. So now we're gonna keep track of every round fired in this gun to see if it can um, manage to, to stay together and keep working. But no matter what, I've lost complete trust in this handgun and SIG's ability to make it work. And keep in mind, guys, when you make a gun this tiny, this small, and chamber it for a very high pressure cartridge like nine millimeter, it's very difficult to get it right. There's a lot of engineering that goes into it. It's not a simple matter of making a tiny gun like this work. And anybody that's ever designed guns will tell you doing what SIG did here is very challenging to do. And SIG just missed the boat. I think most of the problems can be attributed to their lack of quality control. 
but I don't know, and at this point, I don't care. I'm not going to carry the P365, and I want to so bad because this gun, if somebody else like Glock had made it or patented it, this 10-round magazine, um, I would be one happy camper. If Glock had actually come up with this double-stacked patented design, which literally is the same size as a Glock 43 magazine, if you take the base plate off, six versus 10 rounds, Glock would be rolling in even more money than they're currently rolling in. So SIG really knocked it out of the park with the design of this magazine and being able to patent this and therefore locking everybody else out of the market. So I've already seen people on the blogosphere saying, come back Glock and try it again and use a magazine much like the P365. Well, what they don't know or um, whatever is that SIG has a patent on that and Glock can't infringe on SIG's patent, not unless they want to spend a bunch of time and money in court. So the P365 is clearly smaller than the new 43X. A lot smaller, and most of that is in the grip. 10 versus 10, and look at the grip difference. It is substantial. And the neat thing about the P365 is that I can actually still get a full grip on the gun with its pinky extension, but it does add two rounds, so this gun and it's still smaller than this with its 12 round magazine, I can definitely get my pinky on it. I get a half, half grip pinky on there with the, the 12 round magazine. I get a full grip on it and this gun shoots amazingly well. Great sights right out of the box. I had to replace my Glock plastic sights with some TFX Pro um, sights to make it something I would carry. I've seen way too many times the Glock plastic sights just from being dropped, being knocked off zero that there's no way I will ever carry a Glock with its factory sights. And if you're doing it, don't. Get some quality sights. P365 comes with quality night sights. The original version didn't. They stopped production on the original guns. They had so many problems with them. The sights were one of the problems. They replaced them with new sights, presumably fixed the production problems, which I don't think that they, they really have. And they resumed production of this little handgun. But the P365 is definitely a smaller package with the same amount of rounds, and this is peerless in the industry in terms of size, weight, and capacity. Wonderful trigger pull, insanely accurate, really easy to shoot, fires every single type of ammunition I put through it right up until it breaks. All right, so there's the P365. So one of the guns that we decided to compare to the P365 because it too has a 12 round magazine was the Taurus G2C. And this gun we've had really good luck with. Now this gun is definitely thicker than the, um, than the G43. Its grip is about the same. All right, so its grip's about the same, except it has 12 rounds versus 10. It has a stainless steel slide, I believe, and it's not PVD or NPVD coated, but it's about the same size. The gun is a little bit smaller, but not much in terms of length, thickness, it's definitely thicker. So how does the G2C stack up? Well, the G2C has that 10 round, I'm sorry, 12 round magazine. Pretty sure I'm right on the 12 round part. Yep, 12 round magazine. It does have a manual safety, which I could do without. Uh, you can see the manual safety over here. But this little gun worked great for us in the summer when we were shooting it. But when we took this thing out to film, in the, I think it was, gosh, five degrees or 10 degrees when we were out filming. The uh, five degrees, Jason just gave me the hand signal. It was five degrees and something happened with this handgun. The trigger that is nice and smooth right now, which is easy for us to, to manipulate. Let me go ahead and just drop the magazine out so I'm not constantly going through this. Where the trigger works fine right now doesn't hang up. There's a little bit of a shelf there, but not much. When we were out in the bitter cold, we would pull on this trigger and it was just, we didn't think the gun was going to fire. Pulled and pulled and pulled and pulled and pulled and it fell back and then bang. The trigger safety on this thing doesn't work in the bitter cold. That's the only thing we can come up with. When it, we get back into, you know, it's probably around 70 degrees, 72 degrees in the room right now. We get back into normal temperatures, comfortable temperatures, and the trigger moves freely. We took this thing out into five degree weather and we, we were pulling and pulling and pulling and pulling and you may even hear the click, click, you know, the click bang 
that first click is this thing breaking loose and falling to the sear and then firing the gun. The dingus just stopped working in the bitter cold. Not a fan of that. So we'll keep trying it out. I mean, in the, in the warm weather, it seems the gun works okay, but in the bitter cold, major fail, major fail. All right, this thing has white, you know, adjustable sights, um, you know, decent slide serrations, but um, being a Taurus, there's no way on God's green earth I would ever recommend this because you just don't know what you're gonna get. I thought that uh, perhaps this one would be a good one. We've had good luck with it right up until we started shooting it in the cold and then the trigger just basically, uh, it worked, but it was on the verge of not working. It was such a heavy trigger pull that we really thought the trigger was broke. Um, so G2C, sorry. And that brings us to the shield. Another gun that is very, very popular. And I'm gonna go ahead and drop the magazine out. It is clear. But um, another gun that's very popular compared to the G43X. Now, the grip is slightly smaller. It's nice and narrow, just like, well, you can't really see that. It's nice and narrow, just like the Glock 43, but it, um, it has a larger trigger guard, which makes getting a glove finger in there a little bit easier. It's a little bit taller, but again, we have a very short grip and without a pinky extension, my pinky just hangs off the grip. So I've never liked the shield for that. The shield does have extended magazines. This one, this is the seven round magazine. You can put an eight rounder in there that will get you your pinky onto the gun, which is how I would carry it with the eight round magazine. And then you have the Mag Guts magazine conversions, which I did purchase too, and ran in a shield for some time. And I started to have failures with the Mag Guts magazines um, with use. I don't know if they were just getting dirty, but I couldn't accept the failures. The, 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 mag, the rounds would get stuck in the magazine and the mag gut spring wouldn't push them up and they would like bind to the magazine. And no, the springs weren't in backwards. I know what the mag guts guys are gonna say. Uh, they, the, they just weren't 100% reliable. They worked 98% of the time, but that 2% of the time would keep them out of a carry gun for me. So this is either a seven or eight round gun. It gets close to 10 rounds, uh, a very popular handgun, very similar in size to the, the, the Glock 43X. Uh, the grip, again, being the Glock 43X isn't that much bigger. Now, the one thing with the Glock 43X, now you notice I have the, the magazine in the, 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 uh, the Smith & Wesson, and the, the base plate sets flush with the back of the grip. With the Glock 43X, you'll notice that it gives extra length. It doesn't set flush up inside the, mag or up inside the, uh, the grip like it does on the Smith & Wesson, it sticks out. And that's just a typical Glock magazine, but it does add, you know, another fraction of an inch of length to the overall uh, grip length of the handgun. So the Shield is one of those guns that I would definitely carry. I have carried it in the past of the mini guns. Uh, it's, it's a very popular handgun with good reason. They shoot well, I like them, um, but if I could trade this, for a handgun that holds 10 rounds in the magazine, has a more ergonomic grip. And of all the guns here, with the exception of the P365, this gun feels the best in my hands. So out of all the guns here, this is the one that I would consider carrying and is the gun that I am carrying. All right, so now I probably won't stick with that. This is um, a, a gun that I'm just carrying to see how I like it and stuff like that. Uh, I still carry as a primary carry a, a CZ, uh, PO1 Compact, that's my favorite handgun, holds 14 rounds in the magazine. Um, the ergonomics on it are just above and beyond. I like to carry appendix, and I like double action handguns for carrying appendix. And um, yeah, I don't have a safety on it, just a decocker. And with the uh, Cajun Gunworks trigger in it, the double action is only six pounds, and that is perfect for a first shot. Six pounds is your average trigger pull but that gives me the, the advantage of having a hammer that when I go to reholster the pistol, I can put my thumb over the, over the hammer and I push it into the holster. If that hammer starts to come back, I know there's something stuck in the trigger guard and I can stop pushing and not shoot myself 
uh, in the nether regions and wind up either dead or in the hospital. All right, so the Glock 43X, what do I think of it overall? Is it the, um, the FUD gun that, that has been purported on the internet? No, guys, it's not. Did they make the silver finish to be appealing to the Gucci crowd? Um, most FUDs aren't into the Gucci guns, so I would say this is more of a millennial finish if you want to get into generational things. Uh, I don't see this as being a FUD gun. I see this as being um, this, this silver appealing more to the Gucci Glock crowd uh, who like to do goofy blingy things to their guns. I would have been just as fine or happy with the standard finish. I don't know what to expect from this NPVD finish. The whole PVD part of it kind of scares me away. I don't trust PVD finishes. So if this starts to flake off or causes me problems, I'll just Cerakote it and call it a day. And I'll probably just Cerakote it black being an old FUD that I am. Uh, yeah. So overall, I think the G43X is a handgun that is definitely worth consideration for a carry gun. It is good as both a concealment carry gun. Uh, I wouldn't call it deep concealment because, you know, we do have that grip that's a little bit longer than something like this, which is truly a deep concealment handgun, truly something I can put into a pocket with a pocket holster. Um, if I wear man pants, you wear skinny jeans, this isn't going to work. Uh, this thing I'm going to carry in a holster inside the waistband. So it's kind of one of those, uh, it's kind of like a, uh, you know, one of those SUVs that's kind of not quite sure if it's an off-road vehicle or a truck or a family car, uh, that's kind of where the G43 falls. It doesn't know if it's a pocket pistol or a primary carry, uh, but if you want to use it as a primary carry, I think you could do far worse. This is a very, very good handgun uh, based upon my experiences with Glock in general and how this gun shoots and feels and handles for me. <sighs> yeah, I like it. I like it quite a bit. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and learning a little bit more about the Glock 43X. Yes, I do like the handgun quite a bit. And so I will continue to carry the handgun, shoot it, and we will probably talk about it more here in the future. I don't know about the Glock 48 yet, whether or not I'll pick one up. Um, but yeah, I like the 43X as a carry gun. I think for those of you out there that are looking for something uh, that's kind of in the middle between deep concealment and primary carry, you may actually wind up liking the Glock 43X. Don't listen to all the haters. Go pick one up. See how it feels in your hand. If you get the opportunity, shoot it and decide for yourself. If you'd like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel, the best possible way to do that is to become a Patreon supporter. There is a link down below. We take no industry money. We're 100% viewer supported. If you'd like to see honest, unbiased videos like this one in the future, best way to do that again is to become a Patreon supporter. Another great way to support us here at the channel is to pick up one of our many t-shirts or hoodies or sweaters and our, that's from our Forge from Freedom store. Again, there is a link down below. And last but not least, check us out at coppercustom.com, which is our online store. And of course, we are Twitch gamers, believe it or not. If you'd like to join us on live stream, where we're streaming Battlefield 5, Battlefield 4, World of Tanks, Titanfall 2, things like that, there is a link down below. Become a subscriber over there at Twitch. And if you're a Patreon, join us live in a game and be on one of our teams. All right, guys, we're going to sign out for now, fire off the last 10 rounds, and go find someplace warm. We'll talk to you guys soon.